Hi, welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley and today I am so excited to show you these four rustic Kirkland's dupes that I made and I gotta say, I think I came pretty close. Now before we get started, I wanted to remind you, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, make sure all of your notifications are set to all in the drop-down menu. I am so close to 7,000 subscribers, and I would love it if you could help get me there. Then, join me over on Facebook and Instagram and give me a like and follow to join my crafting community. I post a lot of behind-the-scenes content that I know you don't want to miss. Alright, let's get started. So, for my first DIY and Kirkland's dupe, I was gonna make a wheelbarrow that I actually saw on their website. And it looked like it was made out of bamboo. Now I did not have enough bamboo to make the entire thing, so you're gonna see how I actually did this. But first I started off with two packs of the bamboo wind chimes from the Dollar Tree. And what I did was cut them all apart. They are all attached with string. And next I'm gonna take my knife, and at first I started off with this little knife and then you're gonna see I move to the big one right there <laughs> and I'm just gonna cut all of these in half going long ways and then some of them I do cut in half going the other direction as well so I kind of used my scissors and my knife to cut and now the way that I found it best and I don't know if I show it here but I do go ahead and turn it stand it up and then start and slit it down. So you're definitely going to want to try that because it cuts like butter once you do that. So after all my pieces were cut, I took this crate that I bought from the Dollar Tree and this is the one that actually has the slats in it. Then I took two of the longer bamboo sticks and I am going to hot glue one on either side. And what I'm doing is just kind of hot gluing them in the middle of the bamboo stick. So a little bit is is sticking up, up the top at the top and some is, are sticking at the bottom. You just want to make sure that they are even. After that, I took this little motorcycle from the Dollar Tree and I am just going to use the wheel here, so I just easily just popped it off. Then I'm going to take a skewer and it fits perfectly in that hole, but it's not a tight fit so it can still actually roll just like that. And I stuck the skewer in and now what I'm going to do is take some paint sticks and I'm actually going to glue them to the bottom of the crate. Now when you glue them, you want them to go at an angle so it kind of is closer in the front, just like a wheelbarrow. That way that's where the wheel is gonna go. So I added hot glue to the bamboo part so it is resting up against the bamboo and then you're gonna see it goes at an angle so it kind of goes in the shape of a V but of course it doesn't close at the bottom but you're gonna see it does get um, less wide. I don't know why I can't think of the word. After that, I took my crocodile and I'm going to punch two holes right across from each other in my paint sticks. Now to help me get it straight, I put my skewer in, then I put the wheel in, and then I took a pencil and just kind of made a dot where the other hole was. So you're going to see that I'm going to, well first I punched the wrong hole. <laughs> That's why I have a bunch of holes on this side. Then you're going to see where I go ahead and I take my pencil and I'm going to mark where I need to punch the other hole so I don't have a thousand holes on the other one. <laughs> so then I'm just going to take my crocodile and I'm going to do the same thing. Once I have my two holes punched, I'm gonna go ahead and stick the skewer through and the wheel, and look at that, it rolls just like a wheelbarrow. Then I'm going to reinforce the stick with some hot glue. After that, I'm gonna take the other sticks that I cut down, and I'm just going to simply hot glue them around the crate. So with the picture of the Kirkland's ones, there were, there were some bamboo sticks around the corners, so I went ahead and hot glued those, and then I put two on each long side, and then one in the middle of the short side, which you're about to see. 
I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. I really hope that you love what you see. And if you're returning, I appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much for getting me as far as I have come. I have truly enjoyed sharing all of these DIYs with you. And I hope that you are enjoying them as well. So thank you so much for stopping by. Once all of my pieces were put together, I took some ivory chalk paint from Waverly and I painted this entire thing. I painted the front, the inside, the back, the bottom, I painted all of it. Now one thing I did forget to mention was that you're going to see that all the bamboo were actually different heights and I did that on purpose because that was like the Kirkland's do. Now right there I took some spackling and just filled in the holes that I made, um, the wrong ones. <laughs> So that way I could go ahead and paint over it and they would be filled. After my wheelbarrow dried with the ivory paint, I took some Waverly Antique Wax and then my chippy brush, and I am loving these brushes. Ugh, just I just love the look that this gives. And I just dry brushed over this entire thing. Now, the coloring of the wheelbarrow from Kirkland's is different. Uh, it's like a gray, but I am just a ivory and brown fan, so this is what I decided to do. Next, I took two of the silver uh, thumbtacks from the Dollar Tree and I cut off the tack part and then I simply hot glued it over where the stick pokes out. Now you might have to cut down the stick a little bit so these lay flat and that's kind of what I did too. But then once they are on, it looks like a high end little piece. Now I love this. I filled it with some moss and some solo wood flowers and I absolutely love how this came out. Now right here, I'm actually just adding some hot glue on either side of the wheel because it kept going from one side to the other and that helped keep it in the middle. I love this. Now here is the Kirkland's one for $59.99 and like I said, the coloring is a little different and here's mine. What do you think? For my second Kirkland's dupe, I am going to be using these two signs from the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I did was just remove them from their plastic, of course. And then I'm going to remove the backing from each of the frames and then the hangers as well. Next, I'm going to take my hair dryer and I am going to use that to melt the hot glue under the words. And then by using my scraper, I'm going to carefully get the words off off of those pictures. After I've got the words removed, I'm going to take one of those backings and I am going to trace it on some foam board and then cut it out. Now I was planning on just using the backing but it was so hard to cut through and you're gonna see what I mean in a minute because we have to cut circles out of this and I tried and it was just not happening. <laughs> so I decided to use some foam board and oh my goodness it was so much easier. So save yourself the hassle and just use the foam board. It really was so much easier. So after I cut the foam board off I went ahead and sanded all of the edges and then I'm gonna take these three vases that I got from the Dollar Tree and they are all the same size they're the same vase I line them all next to each other and then I'm just going to trace around it now you want to make sure they're all even and they're all lined up and then once I'm done tracing the circles that's when I'm going to cut them out and like I said it was so much easier to cut these out of foam board than it was to try to cut them out of that original backing that came in that frame
After my circles were cut out, I put this back into one of the frames just for size wise and positioning to test it. Now you can see that it kind of popped up a little bit, so I'm going to have to cut it down. But first I'm going to stick a vase through it to make sure that it fits through. Now it did it was a tight fit and it did kind of break a little bit so you're gonna see that I have to cut down the board just right just like that so I'm gonna cut down the perimeter of the board so that way it lays flat in the frame and doesn't like bubble up or fold on itself and then I'm gonna carve out a little bit of the circles that way the vases fit through now at one point it does break but again you can just hot glue it it's not a big deal so this is where I'm going to start just kind of shaving them down a little bit and that way the vases slide right in So once I had my circles cut down a little better, I'm going to put two vases in just to hold it up. Now you can't really tell, but this is sitting on top of that other frame. Now I'm going to take these blocks and I'm going to try to figure out how many I need to make little legs on each corner. And each stand is four blocks deep. So I'm going to make four stacks of four blocks. After all my little stacks were put together, I took some spackling and I covered each side of all of my stacks. Now you can skip this step. My goal here was to cover all of the edges so it looked like one long piece of wood, but it didn't really work, I'm gonna be honest. So you can do this if you want or you can just skip it. But after each of them dried, I just went ahead and sanded them off so it was smooth. After that, I took one of the frames and I'm going to hot glue the backing in just to give it some extra support. Then I'm going to assemble this entire thing. So after I get my backing in and push down all the little um, things <laughs> that um, I actually do eventually remove those, but for now I kept them on. So I am going to first test it out and make sure that those little stacks are tall enough and they were and again they were four blocks deep so next I'm going to hot glue each stack or one stack into each corner now you see here I am hot gluing this to the back what would be the back of the frame Now before I glue the top on, I popped out that little foam piece and I'm going to use my nail file to file the insides of those circles. That way they're just a little smoother. It really isn't seen once you put the vases in, but I just thought that it would be easier to put the vases in if these were nice and sanded down.
after my foam board piece was cut down and sanded how I liked, then I went ahead and hot glued it into the other frame. Next, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to paint this entire thing. Now, I should have just used some regular brown chalk paint because these frames have like a slippery coat on them. They're not wood and it's very slippery. So I actually had to give th both of these pieces a ton of coats of this Waverly Antique Wax. So I, I think it might be better if you just used a regular chalk paint or even sanded them down a little bit but you can you're gonna see that I added on a ton of layers and of course I'm not gonna show all of it but just know that this just came right off and you do definitely want to dry in between coats as well so I did find it easier to flip it over and paint it but I did do the bottom I did the legs on it those little block stacks and here I am I'm drying before I add more paint and then I took the other frame that has the foam piece in it and I did the exact same thing now of course the more antique wax you add the darker it gets and I wanted this to be pretty dark Dark, so I added a lot but just know that it did take a lot of paint to cover this now while I was painting this is when I decided that I wanted to take those little pieces off the back of the frame and it would be okay since I hot glued the backing in so I just used some wire cutters and just pluck them right out Then I just continued to paint. <laughs> all right, so this is what it looks like after all of my layers and it's dry. After that, I took a, another chippy brush and my white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brushed over all of my pieces. I of course did the legs, I did the frames, I did that little bottom piece and then I did the top with the foam board in it as well. Next, by using wood glue and hot glue, I glued my top frame on top of those little legs. So I'm going to highly suggest that you push the vases in before you glue the top piece down because you're going to see what happens in about two seconds when I try to add these vases in. The entire thing comes apart. So just make sure, there we go, now it all broke apart. So just make sure to put your vases in before and then, then you can glue it all together but just know that you really won't be able to get the vases out <laughs> ever. But also one thing that I totally forgot to do that I realized after the fact was take the tags off the bottom of the vases. You definitely want to do that because as you can see looking down you can see the white tag underneath there. Not a huge deal, something that kind of bugs me though. But just remember to remove the tag off the bottom of each vase. Thank you. 
So after I got my big piece all glued back together, I took some twine and wrapped a piece around the top of my vase and then I just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped until I got it the thickness that I liked and I did this on each one of my vases. After all my twine was put onto each one of my vases, that completed this Kirkland's dupe. The one thing I really love about this dupe is that the flowers that you put in, are you can change them for every season, and you all know how much I love interchangeable decor. It just goes so much further, and you can get so many uses out of it, too. So I absolutely love this. Now, in the Kirkland's dupe, which you'll see in one sec, they have some lavender pieces in it and the lavender that I purchased came from Walmart so that's where you can pick up some so here is their dupe right here now it is on sale $23.97 on clearance and then here is mine what do you think next dupe I'm going to use this little frame that I'm gotta be honest I don't know where it came from it was in my stash from when I lived at my parents the first time and what I did was cut off the little backing it's kind of like a box so I just used my knife to cut around it now you can use any kind of frame from the Dollar Tree or anywhere any kind of wooden frame to create this dupe so once I got it all cut off I took this chalkboard sign from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to trace the frame on the back of that sign. Now to cut this out, I'm going to use my big knife to score it several times and then it's just going to pop right off. Now when I compared the chalkboard sign to the frame, I did notice that there were some parts that were hanging over and it was a little too big, so I just used my knife to score it and cut those little edges down. It does not have to fit perfectly on the frame, it just has to cover the opening of the frame. So once I got that all cut down, I did sand the edges, that way they were nice and smooth. Next, I took this piece of paint stick, and it's only half of it, and I had it left over from a different DIY, and I painted it with ivory chalk paint, and I painted the frame as well. This is your friendly reminder to please give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it help my channel to grow, but it also tells YouTube that you love my content and that you want to see more. So YouTube will put more of my content in your homepage. So please don't forget to like this video. I would truly appreciate it. 
After all my painting was done and it was dry, I used my super glue and my hot glue to glue the chalkboard to the back of my frame. Then I'm going to take that paint stick and I'm going to glue that to the chalkboard part, so the back. Now I am going to have it stick up a little bit and it's going to look like a handle. What I'm making is a cutting board menu board. So I am going to have it stick up and again I'm going to use that super glue, hot glue for the instant hold and the permanent hold. Next, to give it that distressed and rustic look, I'm going to sand it really well so the natural wood comes through. After that, I'm going to take a piece of twine and I'm going to tie a knot at one end of my twine. Then I'm going to glue that to the front of my handle and then I'm going to wrap it behind so it looks like the little hanger is going through and a hole in my handle. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. But I'm going to glue it to the back. So now it's going to make a little loop to make it look like a hanger. Now I would not suggest actually hanging this. I would just su suggest standing it up, which is what I ended up doing. But I think it really gives it a cool touch. Now to give the hanger in the back some extra support, I did go ahead and put some duct tape tape over it. Now this is going to be facing a wall so you're not going to see the back. After that I took a pencil and I just wrote out the word menu and then I'm going to take my white chalk marker that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to trace over it. Now I did trace over it a few times and I also I don't know, just dressed it up a little bit, added some little lines here and there, which I thought made it look super cute. Now for my stand, I took two tumbling tower blocks and glued them together. And I did this twice, so I have two stacks of tumbling tower blocks. And then I just simply hot glued each stack behind my cutting board. Now the trick to this is that you want to lean it back a little bit when you hot glue it. That way it just naturally leans back and it gives it a good hold. I love how this came out. I thought it was super cute. Now I don't think it's still on the website. I think they took it down, but this was the screenshot. I had from when I originally screenshot it like a couple months ago so I'm not sure how much it was but that is Kirkland's menu board and here's mine what do you think This last Kirkland's dupe is so easy. So I started off with this sign that I had left over from Easter and I peeled off the little bunny in the front and as much as I tried to keep it all in one piece, that did not happen. I destroyed this little guy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right, so after that, I flipped my sign over and then I pulled off the hanger. Now where the staples were, it was a little rough, so I did take my sanding block and I sanded that down so that way it was nice and smooth when I went to paint this. Now to paint this, I did use some black acrylic paint and I painted this entire thing, including all of the edges. While my board was drying, I took these three black frames that I got from the Dollar Tree and I did purposely get black and I removed all of the plastic from each of them and then I took them all apart. So I took the 
glass out, the paper inside out, and the backing off. Now I did break off the little stand on the back as well on each of these because we won't be needing it. So after I disassembled all of them, I wiped them all down. They were kind of dusty. So I wiped them all down with a baby wipe. And then I took my little chippy brush and some white paint and I dry brushed over each of my frames. Next, I took my board after it was dry and did the same thing. I just dry brushed some white Waverly chalk paint over that. Next, I'm gonna take this little piece of a plunger stick, and I'm talking about the smaller one right there. The long one is from a plunger too, but I'm gonna use that smaller piece to measure two more pieces out of that long plunger stick, and then I'm going to use my miter box and saw to cut them down. Keep in mind, any of the tools here you see me using that did not come from the Dollar Tree, they're gonna be in my description box below, so you could definitely check those out if you wanna pick up something for yourself to craft with. After that I sanded them all down and now it's time to glue these to my board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place each of my little knobs down and then I'm just going to put my frames down just to get the line them lined up properly. So I want to make sure that the knobs are in the middle of each frame. So once I had them positioned how I liked, I used my pencil to trace around it so I knew where to glue them when I went to put them back on. Then by using wood glue and hot glue, I'm just going to simply glue these on where I made my circle marks. Now, as you can see, I was doubting the fact that they were lined up, so I did end up taking a ruler and measuring it. I gotta be honest, I don't remember the exact measurements, but if you end up making this, just make sure that they're all even with each other. Then I went ahead and painted each of my knobs with the black acrylic paint. Then I'm gonna take that chippy brush again with the white Waverly chalk paint and distress each of them too. After that, I'm gonna take all of my frames and I'm gonna put them back together. Now, for video purposes, I just took that piece of paper that came in them and put them upside down so the white part was showing, but obviously, you can add any photos you'd like. Next, I'm gonna take this black ribbon and I'm gonna cut off three pieces that are the exact same length and we're going to hang these frames from those little knobs so to do this i flip the frames over and then by using super glue and hot glue i glued the ribbon to the top of the frame in the back so this was a little tricky because I obviously wanted these to be all the same length. So I kind of just had to, now of course you can use a ruler and measure it, but I just eyeballed it, but I just kind of kept lifting it up and testing it. And then you're gonna see that in some of the instances I had to maybe move the ribbon up or take it off and move it down, stuff like that. So you're just gonna have to kind of measure it or eyeball it. But if 
but eventually I did get them to be pretty even with each other. I wouldn't say it was perfect, but it was pretty close. Now to reinforce my ribbons on the back, I did go ahead and put some duct tape just to give it an extra hold. After that, I flipped over my sign and I just added some super glue and hot glue to glue on a hanger for the back of this. Now I did not want my hanger to show, so I did put it a little lower and it's not very long. And then I also put duct tape on either end, again, just to give it that extra hold. So when I flipped these over, I realized that there was hot glue on the ribbons from when I kept moving them up and down. And rather than trying to peel off all that hot glue to clean it up, I honestly just took a black paint marker and painted over the glue and it seemed to hide it pretty well. I have to say, I think that this dupe was the one that came closest to the Kirkland's original piece, and I think it's really cool. So here's theirs, $89.99. And mine, I believe, was for maybe $5. But I think it came pretty close. But what do you think? I absolutely love how all of these DIYs came out today. I love how rustic they look and of course if you're a farmhouse person then you will love all of these as well. I think that my favorite is probably the wheelbarrow. I just love how you can switch it up and I did not glue those flowers in there so I am super excited in the next couple months I can add some pumpkins to it so I can't wait to do that. I also think a close second is going to be the three vase piece I have had my eye on that for a while and wanting to recreate that so I am so happy that I finally got to do it and I'm gonna have to remember to go back and take those stickers off they just totally bug me but you're gonna have to let me know in the comments which one was your favorite and if you're going to try to dupe any of these pieces and let me know what you think about all of them I want to thank you so much for joining me today if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, please give my video a thumbs up if you love what you saw. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!